Now, there's a lot of talk on Twitter and on Reddit about how the Next.js app router has destroyed React. Kind of comes down to two things for these folks. One is who's controlling React. I'm not going to get into that. That's a bunch of politics. The other is about the developer experience. People are saying that the app router is a terrible developer experience in comparison, I guess, to the pages router. Well, I'm going to show you three examples of the app router simply destroying the pages router. Let's get right into it. All right, here's a simple test application that basically goes off and gets some test data for comments and for users. There's two routes on it, a homepage route and a user's route. Now, the homepage route only shows the comments, and the user's route shows both user data and also comments. Now, let's go take a look at the code as it's implemented on the pages router. So this is the code for the main index route. What we're doing is get server-side props, going off, hitting this placeholder data, and then we're getting those comments back, and we're passing that onto home. Home is then taking those comments and sending them off to the comments component, which is basically just formatting them for it. Now, the first thing you see right here is that the code is kind of spread out all over the place. You've got the fetch over and get server-side props. Home is actually doing prop drilling to get that data into comments, and comments is just a dumb component that just does the formatting. And it gets even worse if you look at the user's route. The user's route has to get two sets of data, one for the comments and then one for the users, and then prop drill all that down to those components so that those can render. So now you've got both the index page and the users page going making the same request. It's a maintenance nightmare. Now let's take a look at the app router version of this. In the home route, we simply just import the comments component. The comments component then goes and makes its own request the comments component, which is one of the dreaded React server components, is an async component that does its request, goes and gets its data, and then formats it. And you see how much cleaner that is? All of the code required to make comments work is just in comments. The users route is just as simple. We bring in comments, we bring in users, we put them wherever we want to on the page, and users and comments components handle their own business. Users goes off and gets users, comments goes off and gets comments, and that's all it takes. We don't have any prop drilling, we don't have any duplication in the get server-side props. It's just so much cleaner. Now, one of the issues with talking to APIs on the back end is what happens when those APIs are slow? And that's something where the app writer really excels. Let's go and add the ability to delay either the comments or the user's API. Let's go over and add a three second delay to comments. And now to show this delay, I'm gonna start with about blank. And now we can see a long three second delay before we get the data. That's not great. That's not a good customer experience. So how do we fix that? Well, in the app router, simply bring in the suspense component and we can wrap any component we want in a suspense. Now watch. Now we get a nice loading fallback and then we get the data. So easy. You want to see how much it takes to do this on the pages router? It's bonkers. Now over in the pages implementation of this and our get server side props for that main route, we're going to call this get comments server. And this get comments server is a fairly complex function to return a promise that's either going to give you the array of comments if they come in quickly or null if we time out in that request. So we set a timeout to see if that API is taking too long. And if it takes too long, we return null. Otherwise, we return the data. That's pretty complicated already. Now let's go back to our index page. So we get back comments or null. We pass them on to our comments. Our comments component then has this handy use effect that if the value is null, then it goes off and makes a request to a server endpoint on API that also does the request for comments so that we fall back onto the client doing the request. Now I've set the comments delay to three milliseconds. Let's go see what happens in the browser. So I hit refresh here. We can see that we are loading comments from the client. It's going off and making the API request. And then we have our result. If we make the comments come in quickly, then those load very quickly off the server and we don't make the client side request. This is the cleanest way I could think of to do this kind of suspense work in the pages router. And it creates all kinds of problems. First, there's complexity. The pages router version is just so much worse. App router, you just add a suspense and you're done. Second thing is you're adding an API endpoint for the client, which is exposed to the open internet. So now you've lost your ability to just have the server connect to your back end. Now it's actually exposing your back end to the open internet. And the third is if you return null 
during the get server side props, then what goes to bots that are looking at the SSR of the page is no data. And that's actually fixed on the app router side. On the app router side, the app router holds the connection open until all the promises throughout all of the suspenses finally complete and all the data is out there. It just simply streams the new HTML in place. And from a bot perspective, the HTML just tends to come in just a little bit later. It's very, very clean. And on top of that, Versal is experimenting with things like partial pre-rendering, which add even more power to the suspense system. So far, we looked at data loading and shown just how much easier it is to use the app router to get data and display it. Next up, we've looked at streaming and seen just how much cooler that suspense system is than any kind of hodgepodge we've created in the pages router. Finally, we're gonna take a look at interactivity and I'm gonna show you just how wildly cool the server action system is to make interactivity with the server is so much easier. So now we're just gonna work with that comments component and I'm gonna add some filtering to our comments. You can just type in some values and it automatically filters. So how does that happen on the pages router? Well, it all starts with the homepage code where you have that get server side props that goes and gets the comments and then sends them on to the comments component. The comments component then takes in those comments and initializes some local state called search results. It also has a search term that is managed by the input Anytime the input changes, we call handle change. Handle change then calls a local API, comment search, and that comment search is a traditional Next.js pages router API endpoint. It gets the data, and then it returns a filtered and sliced results. Now I've got this complexity strewn across three different components in the pages router. We've got fetches in two different places. What the heck? How do we do this a lot easier in the app router? In the app router, we just bring in the comments component, just like we did before, no changes at all. The comments component brings in this new searchable comments component, get to that in a second. But then down in the implementation, we first get our initial comments. We then create a server action called search. You can give this async function a search string. It then gets the comments, filters them down, and returns them back. We then send the comments and this new async server action over to searchable comments. So let's take a look at searchable comments. Searchable comments is a client component. That means that it renders on both the client and the server. It takes comments and that search action and that handle change function that was doing all that work of making the fetch, getting the results back and all that, and the pages router has now been simplified down to simply setting the search term to the most recent value and then setting the search results to an await of the search which is that server action. And Next.js is handling all of the transit of the search term and then all the search results back for us. Seriously, y'all, it's really that easy. Here it is live, and I guarantee you can't tell the difference in performance between these two. Now let me show you one more thing about this that's going to blow your mind. All of this code that you've just seen is available to you in GitHub for free in a link in the description right down below. And one that you're really going to want to take a look at is the App Search Turbo Repo. The App Search project is the one that I just showed you. But now I've got two things. We have an app called App Search, but all of the components, comments, and also users is over in the packages directory under UI. In the source directory, we have exactly the same code that we did before with comments, searchable comments, and users. You can see us making all of the fetches exactly the same code in both places. And then using that, we just go into apps, app search. We're bringing that same common code, but instead of having it in the local file, we're getting it from that local package. So why is this cool? Well, that means that any application can use that package and all of the complexity of talking to the back end is over in that package's UI. All I need to do as a consumer of the comments component is just put it on my page. All of the interactivity with the server action is all handled by Next.js. I don't have to add any additional API endpoints. I don't have to configure it. I don't have to send any data to it. It's all self-contained. So you think this is all complex? I don't know what to tell you. Honestly, the developer experience is a breeze here. It was so much easier to build these examples on the app router than it was on the pages router. I implore you to try it for yourself. Go get this code, try it out, it's free. Check out the different app router versions versus the pages router version. Try and do a better pages router version. I would love to see it. But I'm telling you, the folks telling you that the DX of the app router is way worse, don't know what they're talking about. All right, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button, click on that bell, and be notified the next time a new Blue Collar Coder comes out.